Hi guys, I am here today to do a book talk for Underground by Haruki Murakami. This was translated by Alfred Birnbaum and Philip Gabriel. And this is an, um, <laughs> it's a nonfiction book and it is about the March 20th, 1995 sarin gas attack on the Tokyo subway system um, by the cult Alm Shinrikyo, uh, which was led by a man named Shoko Asahara. Uh, this was extremely interesting. I had personally never heard of this attack. Um, I am, I guess, young though, so I was only two, or no, not two, I can do math. I was like seven or eight when this happened, so I think it's a little understandable that I didn't hear about it, um, but I am surprised that absolutely no awareness of it was in my brain or that like no one talks about this ever. But anyways, um, this was extremely interesting. It's split up into two sections. The first part, Underground, um, is basically just interviews that Haruki Murakami um, did with the survivors of the attack. And so um, that beginning uh, interview type section has, um, it's split into five. There was five different, five different like teams of two that uh, committed these attacks on three different subway systems. So each group of two of the cult members had one person that was driving and one person that was on the subway system that uh, released the sarin into the air um, by poking holes in the package with the tip of an umbrella. And so it's split into the different, you know, teams of two, I guess. And um, at the very beginning, there's a, a, the name of the subway line that we're talking about, and then the two perpetrators of that specific attack, and like kind of how they joined Aum Shinrikyo, and like how the attack happened. Um, one of one of the teams, the guy who was supposed to release the packet, like kind of wavered at the last minute and left but then he got back on the train so it kind of like describes not only the the two people that were involved in that specific attack but um uh, like how what what the effects were of their specific attack and like how many people died and how many people were injured and then um after it has that little intro about that it has the interview with the different um survivor and so it has their name at the top their age in um at the time of the gas attack in parentheses and then a little bio on them, and then their actual interview. Uh, for the most part, Haruki Murakami does not, uh, there's not like him asking questions in it. It's mostly just the person giving their account. Um, and yeah, I thought it was super interesting. It, The thing that like surprised me the most about these um, at accounts is that most people just like went to work <laughs> like they didn't really know what was happening because you know this isn't really something that we can plan for in our daily life and not something that you think is going to happen so it's like oh there's some liquid on the ground like that's strange everyone's coughing that's strange well time to go to work I can't really see that's strange but oh well I'm just going to go to work because you don't really think like oh I was poisoned by sarin like that's not obviously the first thing that comes to your head so I don't know it was very it was very very interesting um there was a couple of accounts from doctors that were uh you know, treating patients and like how it was for them and what the situation was because, you know, no one really knew what it was at first and like how to treat it. And, um, so yeah, I thought that was extremely interesting. And then, um, right after those, uh, interviews, there is a little essay that Haruki Murakami wrote, um, that is called, I think, um, Blind Nightmare, Where Are We Japanese Going? And I thought that essay was extremely interesting. I think it has a lot of parallels to kind of like stuff that's happening today. Um, and he, you know, just kind of assesses the situation and talks about how Japanese culture reacted to it and, you know, how, how, because this, this group was like kind of popular, not popular, but um, the leader was trying to become elected so he was like having a campaign and stuff and like everyone kind of just was like, oh, these crazies over here, let's just ignore them. And then, you know, they did this horrible thing. They actually, I think, perpetrated another gas attack too prior to this and they attacked like a lawyer and some other people. So they were pretty hardcore. But before that violence started to happen, everyone was just kind of like pushing them to side like, oh, they're just, you know, crazies. Let's kind of ignore them. So he kind of dissects, you know, that stuff which was super interesting and I'm very interested to um I 
I say the word interesting a lot, don't I? Um, I definitely want to reread that essay at some point in the future. Um, and then after the essay portion is an, um, another section that's called The Place That Was Promised, which is um, part two of this book. And so I guess when he first published this book, he was getting uh, criticism that he it was very one-sided. So I don't know if this is like republished after. It was originally published in 97. And so I think this... Um, so the interviews here at the end are actually from um, um members. <laughs> I don't know why that took me so long. And so this says that um, these interviews were published from April to October of 1997. And um, so they were pu pu published kind of separately. And then this is obviously them all together. But I don't know how this was published in Japan besides the fact that Underground was a thing. And then these interviews were published serially. But um, anyways, the, the last bit, the interviews with the cult members was, I think, extremely terrifying and creepy and enlightening a little bit not enlightening but I don't know I am fascinated by crazies and uh like you know serial killers like I I like reading about that kind of stuff and so it's really interesting to get into the mindset of someone who joins a cult um none of the people that are interviewed are like the people that actually committed the crimes they're just people that were members of the group and um they talk a lot about how when they were growing up, they felt, you know, a disconnection from other people and they felt um, just not connected to society and they felt other and different and like they they found this group that was looking for enlightenment and all of this stuff and that kind of spoke to them. And um, I guess this was also happening around the time, I think it was, I don't remember what the name of it was, but there was um, Nostradamus, I guess. Maybe that's what it is. But basically, like, they thought the world was going to end in 1999. And so it's like doomsday type religions. And even one of the people that he interviewed says that he's still interested in doomsday religion. And, like, you know, 1999 is going to happen when, like, everything's going to be reset, apparently. Um, obviously, that did not happen. <laughs> um, but it's um, very like wild to hear these people's accounts of you know feeling this disjointedness and so they found this group and they're just seeking enlightenment and then because they were it, it's the type of society or the type of group that requires you to become a renunciate basically and so they had to like break all attachments to their family members and like the you know normal world whatever and so um they, they weren't getting any news info and stuff. They were stuck in their little like community where they weren't getting any external information. So when the attacks happened, they were like, oh, you know, no, that wasn't, that wasn't Om. Like there's no way anyone in our group could have done it. I, I couldn't even kill a cockroach. And it's like that inability to like look at something critically because you're emotionally attached to it kind of. So I don't know. I thought it was super interesting. This cult reminded me of a mix of like Scientology and Charles Manson's group. Um, obviously <laughs> the Scientology bit is not because of the killing bit, but um, in order to join this group, you had to like shell out some dough. So um, I think it was like 30,000 yen. I don't know how much that equates to, but someone, you know, I, I feel like that sounds like not a not insignificant insignificant amount of money um and it was like the more money that people donated the quicker they reached enlightenment so you know that's kind of like shady to me but it reminds me a little bit i feel like scientology has like a buy-in factor and um people who are like wealthier or have more status um go to the t kind of like top layers because it's, it's the same type of thing where there's multiple levels of um people. Um, I forget what the name exactly of the cult members was, but yeah, so I thought that was interesting. And then of course, you know, because of Charles Manson, because it's a group that is basically listening to their leader, their guru, their, you know, savior, their person that knows everything and, um, who was like a very good manipulator and a very good talker and like told these people before they entered like, Oh, like, you know, this, 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 and Murakami, Murakami does interject a lot. So, um, with, with the first interviews, he doesn't really say anything, but with the last interviews of the cult members, he does ask a lot of questions and you can see him kind of like getting in there like, Oh, he could have done that research on you before. And it's like, yeah, but it's very compelling when, you know, <laughs> like da, 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 da. So I don't know. I thought it was extremely interesting. Um, I gave this four out of five stars. I would super recommend, I don't know if I'm necessarily going to like go back and reread any part of this book other than the essay in the middle. Um, but there were a few books that were mentioned in here about, um, I think it was um, 
literally just three. And so I wrote those down and I'm interested to read them in the future because this doesn't really talk about the cult per se, other than from the perspectives of some people that were part of it and maybe now are not. I think a couple of them might still be in it, that the, the interviews, but it's mostly, you know, not. So I'm, I'm curious to get more information about this group. Um, but yeah, so that was Underground by Haruki Murakami. Please let me know if you have read this or if you know anything about this cult or about this gas attack. I'm, I'd be very curious to hear what knowledge other people have about this. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.